librarian's fifth online learning session, Mermaid Tales. My name is Marina the Mermaid, and I'm so pleased that you've joined me here yet again so we can learn all about the fantastic creatures who live under the sea. Now, if you joined us last week, you'll remember that we learned about mysteries of the deep. And I told you about animals and how they're suited to living in that harsh environment. Also, uh, last week, I read you a story about a sperm whale's adventure in the deep sea. Since then, I have received so many amazing drawings and pictures from you all. So thank you so much for sending those in to me. They're currently decorating the wall of my mermaid cave. But as usual, I have chosen a few to show you today. Okie dokie, this one is from Olivia, aged three and a half, and she has drawn lots of animals from the story last week. I particularly like her Dumbo octopus just here. <laughs> Fantastic job, Olivia, that's wonderful. Aha, now this one is from Sarah, aged five, and she has written, no rubbish in the sea. Now that's really important, isn't it? Because sadly rubbish is ending up in the sea and it's harming sea life. So that's really important. Thank you, Sarah, that's really lovely. Aha, now here we have Dolly's picture. She's age seven and she's drawn mermaids who live in the deep sea. Amazing, Dolly, that's really lovely. And then, oh, what do we have here? Aha, so this one is from Amelie who loves turtles. She's age six and she has done this drawing using felt pens and paint. How amazing is that? Thank you so much, my darling, that's amazing. Now, some of you actually wrote me letters and asked me questions. So I've chosen a question to answer for you today. I was asked, how big could megalodons get? Now, megalodons were the largest sharks that have ever existed on our planet. And they lived when the dinosaurs were around. Now, the largest megalodon, they think, could get to 20 meters long. Show me what a meter looks like. And imagine 20 of them. 20 meters and the girls were often twice the size of the boys how interesting <laughs> now this brings us on to the theme of today if you joined us earlier for our deep learning session you would have learned all about megafauna or the largest creatures in the whole ocean and we are also going to be learning about megafauna today but in particular what they like to eat for dinner <laughs> now the first animal I would like to talk about today is a turtle. Can you all do your best turtle impression for me with your lovely flippers swimming through the sea? Oh, fantastic job. Well done, everybody. Now, the largest turtle in the whole world is the leatherback turtle. A leatherback turtle can get to two meters long. And they have quite pointy mouths or beaks to grip onto jellyfish. And because they only like to eat meat. We can say that jellyfish, um, jellyfish, <laughs> that leatherback turtles are carnivores. Amazing, can you all say that word, carnivore? <gasps> Fantastic, everybody. And we also have here a green turtle. Now I have a friend in this tank behind me called Friday and he is a green sea turtle. Perhaps he'll come and say hello later on. <laughs> but Friday actually has a serrated mouth or beak. Serrated means kind of zigzaggy, so a little zigzag shape around his beak. And that allows him to snip at seagrass and snap at seaweed. And here at the aquarium, uh, the biologists like to feed him things like cucumbers and peppers, yup. Now, because he only likes to eat plants, we can call him a herbivore. Can you guys say the word herbivore? Fantastic, excellent. And of course, lastly, we have the flatback turtle. And flatback turtles have a long kind of pointy bird-like beaks for gripping onto seagrass, but also shrimps and crabs. So we can say that flatback turtles are omnivores. Can you guys say the word omnivores? Brilliant, so we know that carnivores only eat meat, herbivores only eat plants, and omnivores like to eat both. Fantastic job, everybody. Lovely. So let's move on to talking about the biggest carnivores who live in the sea. Now, can you guys think of a word that we could use when we're talking about an animal 
that likes to eat another animal? Hmm, it begins with a P. If you're thinking predator, you are spot on, fantastic. So we could say that carnivores are predators. But what could we call the animals that they eat? Hmm, could we call them prey? Hopefully you're thinking prey. Excellent, guys. So let's check out some of these animals now. Okay, so here I have a shark and a whale. Now, this shark is named after a stripy cat who lives in the jungle. Can you think of the name? If you're thinking tiger shark, you guys are absolutely spot on. This is a tiger shark and this is a sperm whale just like we had last week. And in lots of ways, they're quite similar because they're these big predators that swim through the sea hunting fish. And they've got these big tails to push them through the water. So they're pretty amazing. And good senses too, to sense where their prey are. So very, very similar in lots of ways. But they're also quite different, aren't they? So whales come to the surface to breathe. Can you guys take a breath of fresh air? Go, and out again. Brilliant, you guys have lungs just like whales do, whereas sharks breathe using these little gills on the side of their body under the water. Also, whales have flippers to swim with, these little flippers just here, whereas sharks have fins to steer in the water with. So, they're also different with their teeth, because even though they've got big sharp teeth, their teeth are different shapes. So, the whale shark, well, shark, the sperm whale actually has cone-shaped teeth, like an ice cream cone, whereas tiger sharks have teeth that look like this just here. So all of these teeth, as you can see, are really jagged or serrated around the side. Remember, kind of zigzaggy. That's pretty cool, isn't it? And they have all these rows of teeth as well. So if one tooth falls out of the front row, a tooth from the row behind will just move forward to replace it. And they never, ever run out of teeth. Pretty amazing. Now, you guys, even though most sharks and whales have these really massive teeth, some are a little bit different. Let's talk about some of those just here. Now, I'm wondering if you guys can tell me what type of whale this one is. I'll give you a clue. He's named after a colour. Hmm. Have you guessed it? Well done, it's a blue whale, amazing. And here we have a whale shark. And they're quite similar in some ways because a blue whale is the biggest animal in the ocean and on the planet, okay? So they're really massive. They can get to about 30 meters long, pretty huge. And of course, the whale shark is the biggest shark. They're really incredible. They can get to about 13 meters long. It's pretty cool. And of course, they both eat similar things. Even though they're the biggest creatures, they actually eat the teeniest, tiniest of animals in the sea called plankton. These teeny tiny animals that get swept along with the ocean waves, but they eat them in slightly different ways. So the whale shark will suck in lots of water and push the water out of its gills and the little plankton will get trapped in little comb-like structures in the gills. Whereas whales, these blue whales right here, actually use something called baleen, these massive plates that have these comb-like structures uh, and they suck in lots of water, push the water out and the little plankton get caught on the little hair-like structures of the baleen, which is really amazing. So I think megafauna are absolutely wonderful and it is now time for our story today which is actually about a whale shark who lives in the sea. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. This story is called A Toothy Tail. On a sunny springtime morning, the ocean was calm and still. In the open water, a whale shark lived who cruised through the sea eating krill. He loved to eat all kinds of plankton, like shrimp and fish eggs, yum. He filtered the food with his giant mouth so he could fill his tongue. But then a dark cloud went over the sun as he noticed a fishing net. It was very big and hard to see. The whale shark started to fret. 
he almost swam straight into it, trying to change route. But luckily, he dodged the net as other fish followed suit. Where am I? The whale shark thought to himself as he followed a different track. He was closer to the seashore now, not wanting to turn back. That was when he saw the tooth floating in the sea. It was the coolest thing he'd ever seen. He gazed at it with glee. It belonged to a shark and was curved and sharp. That much he knew. But which species had it come from? He really hadn't a clue. This is what the tooth looked like that the whale shark found just floating around in the ocean. <laughs> then he spotted a shiver of sharks just resting on the sea floor. Perhaps it's one of theirs, he thought, wanting to find out for sure. As the whale shark approached, he got a closer peek. They had flaps on their snouts and were long, grey and sleek. They were the laziest nurse sharks he had ever seen. They just lay on the seabed looking very serene. But when he arrived, the nurse sharks jumped and gazed at him in awe. They had never ever seen a shark of his species before. Here we go. So this is a lovely drawing I've done of some nurse sharks looking at the big whale shark who's come over to investigate and see if that tooth belongs to them. <laughs> lovely. <clears throat> Whoa, you're humongous, gasped the nurse sharks, making a fuss. I can't see any teeth. Surely you're not a shark like us. The whale shark blushed and felt rather out of place. I think this tooth is yours. Is this the case? The nurse sharks admired the tooth by the whale shark's side. This tooth is sharp and long, but ours are flat and wide. We use ours for crushing shells of prey that passes by. Sorry we can't help you. Give some other sharks a try. The whale shark swam away, letting out a sigh. I wish I had teeth like other sharks, he thought, wanting to cry. Next, he saw a bigger shark, yet only half his size. She had stripes much bolder than him and clear, beady eyes. Well, hello there, said the tiger shark, looking deep in thought. Is there any food around? I'm not fussy. I eat all sorts. So remember, a tiger shark looks like this with those lovely stripes on their bodies. <laughs> Brilliant. <clears throat> no idea, said the whale shark, admiring her stripy skin. He wished he had a pattern like hers on his body, tail and fins. The tiger shark noticed his lack of big teeth and looked him in the eyes. Goodness, you are a whale shark. You've taken me by surprise. The whale shark nodded and looked away, not knowing what to do. I think this tooth is yours, he said. Tell me if this is true. The tiger shark grinned and showed all of his teeth. She had many, many rows. They were wide and jagged to saw and tear. How many did she have? Who knows? Like all sharks, I'm a carnivore, a top predator, some might say. It's too small to be mine. But try asking the shark at the lighthouse close to the bay. The whale shark dreamed of having the teeth that he had seen that day. He swam towards the lighthouse to see what this shark had to say. He spotted the shark straight away. He was really quite a sight. He swished his tail close to the surface, catching the rays of light. He'd never seen a thrasher shark with a tail this long. His body was torpedo shaped and looked mighty strong. The thrasher shark noticed him approach and swam over to say hi. He was shocked the whale shark looked so different and wanted to know why. So here we go. Here's a picture of a thrasher shark with a lovely long tail approaching the whale shark, gazing at him thinking, hmm. Wow, <laughs> what a sight. Excellent job. <laughs> okay. How do you catch your prey without a tail like mine? I use my tail to herd fish and it works just fine. 
The whale shark explains that he eats plankton, filtering it from the sea. Now I have a question for you. Can you answer it for me? I found a tooth, pointy and curved. I really think it's yours. Looks ideal for gripping fish. May I look inside your jaws? The thresher shark revealed his rows of teeth as he smiled wide. He explained it was a perfect match as he showed them off with pride. <clears throat> Sharks often lose their teeth, but they are replaced by the rose behind. There are lots floating in the ocean. They are always fun to find. The whale shark said his good, had said his goodbyes as his mission had come to an end. He wished that he had such sharp teeth like those he'd seen on his friend. The whale shark returned to the open ocean, feeling pretty glum. He had found the owner of the tooth but he still felt rather numb. I'm far too massive, with very faint stripes and a tail that's really quite short. I lack big teeth and don't look like a shark, or so the whale shark thought. But then he saw a beautiful giant slowly swimming south. She was blue in colour, with white spots and a wide, smiley mouth. Golly, gasped the whale shark, as a creature swam into view. He admired her wonderful size. Please tell me, what are you? I'm a whale shark, silly, just like you. We share the same features. We have unique and wonderful patterns, different to other creatures. Here is a lovely drawing of the whale shark who came to see. There we go, the whale shark in the story. <laughs> Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> it dawned on him that he had never seen one of his kind. Whale sharks are amazing, he thought. How had he been so blind? His new friend shared words of wisdom as she looked out for prey. Never forget that we're all great and special in our own way. The whale sharks were very happy and smiled a great deal. They swam along side by side to find a tasty meal. <laughs> Fantastic, everybody. Well, I hope you've enjoyed learning about megafauna today. I've had such an amazing time with you all. I've shown you my drawings, so I would like to see yours now. Over half term, perhaps if you feel like drawing some ocean creatures or mermaids or megafauna, please send them to learning at oceanconservationtrust.org. I'll be back next week talking about life cycles of animals who live in the North and South Pole. Pretty cool stuff. In the meantime, guys, I love drawing and writing and reading, but sometimes I like to just sit and watch fish. So I invite you to spend the last couple of minutes of our session today just relaxing and enjoying looking at the beautiful life that can be found under the sea. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.